Rituals play an important role in society and can be seen taking on many different forms in popular culture. Much like every other form of popular culture, they are constantly adapting and taking on new forms as the generations change from one to the next. A functionalist would say rituals are generally used to add structure to society, providing us with a universal feeling of solidarity and effervescence. This can be seen hugely in spectacles such as sports games, where in the case of football, entire cities or even regions of the country are united in support of a common goal, having their team win. This solidarity and effervescence unite complete strangers who may have nothing in common aside from the sports team they are a fan of. When looked at critically, the power of rituals on individuals is immense. Another aspect of functionalism is that we must have deviance. In society, this deviance can come as different forms of popular culture such as spectacles, music, television shows, and movies, some of which may be what they consider a ritual of rebellion. Rituals of rebellion are forms of deviance in society that have been ritualized. These rituals of rebellion that we have in our society, much like all other forms of popular culture, are constantly changing and adapting as the generations change from one to the next. Rituals of rebellion are used to make the sacred profane and often collectively defy the rules that we have in place, applying to behavior towards authority and one another. One form of ritualized rebellion that has been around for multiple generations is comedy television shows. These are often used to poke fun at and in ways openly defy authority figures, societal norms, and family and social structure in ways that are not openly aggressive or violent. Examples of these would be shows like The Simpsons or South Park, which are known for embodying rituals of rebellion in every way. The Simpsons is an animated show that first aired in 1989, and it is a clever, comedic portrayal of working-class life, working to mock American culture, society, and human shortcomings through alcohol consumption, family dysfunction, and wacky character depictions based on real-life celebrities and social stereotypes. This show uses its animated world and the characters within it to point out potential societal problems with things such as the educational system, the sanity of celebrities and politicians, and big problematic themes of American society, such as the character Mr. Burns who is a big business tycoon that owns the nuclear plant many of the working class characters are employed at. He's cruel, manipulative, sinister, and cares for nothing but money and wealth, basically a conflict theorist version of human ambition. Among all the ridiculous everyday shenanigans, hijinks, and dysfunction is the deep-rooted bond that the Simpsons family has with each other that makes it relatable for audience and enables us to see these societal flaws in our own lives. This show is the product of Generation X, and since then, other shows have been released that reflect the success that this show achieved as a ritual of rebellion. Probably the most successful example of the most recent generation's adaptation of what the Simpsons meant to that generation would be the television show South Park. South Park is a show about four boys, Stan, Kyle, Eric, and Kenny, who are all in grade school together, along with a wide cast of other characters in the animated world they populate. South Park takes a much darker, more cynical, and way more vulgar approach at exposing these societal flaws. With apparent attempts to be as politically incorrect as possible, South Park is able to expose the underbelly of society, shedding light on societal problems, social stereotypes, and family dysfunction. The purpose of rituals of rebellion are to make the sacred profane and defy the rules of behavior towards authority. More recently than ever, South Park has taken on the role of a very important ritual of rebellion with its vast fan basis and current episode topics. Each episode works to expose and make fun of at least one current controversial topic we are facing as a society, and more importantly, doing so in a way that is as offensive and triggering as possible touching every topic from school shootings, racism, religion, social inequality, technology, and politics. For example, starting in the 19th season all the way through the current season, the longtime character on the show, Mr. Garrison, a vulgar, ignorant, sex-crazed elementary school teacher with a constant crisis in sexual identity, takes on the role of Donald Trump. He jokingly rides through his presidential campaign, being openly racist, swearing at his supporters, calling them idiots and telling them not to vote for him, but still ends up winning. Surely, in a crude way, the writers are attempting to reflect what they view as the uncensored truth about Trump and his supporters. This is a clear example of this ritual of rebellion openly defying and behaving negatively towards authority, in this case our own president. They do this same sort of thing with countless other real people who they fictionally portray in extreme and usually comical ways. An interesting one in relation to sociology is Jeff Bezos who appears in the end of season 22 of South Park portrayed as an evil genius using Amazon to manipulate society and people's behavior in order to create the perfect consumer. They even animate him to speak with telepathy and have the appearance of the Telosians from Star Trek the original series. 
He is in those episodes the embodiment of conflict theory. Throughout the episode, he is using Amazon to change the way that people behave and change the knowledge they have in an attempt to combine the lower and middle class into a single group he called the consumer class. The townsfolk of South Park face problems as all the local shops go out of business and all the work is diverted to the new Amazon fulfillment center that opened up in town. They work at Amazon shipping packages in order to make money to buy more stuff from Amazon. Jeff Bezos is only stopped when the stress of the situation causes everyone to start smoking marijuana, and then in a high state they realize the cycle that they have gotten into and the town shuts down the fulfillment center, eventually going back to a more old-fashioned way of life, leaving Amazon behind and replacing it once again with small local businesses. The writers are clearly using this to try and expose the problem created by the consumer culture and laziness we've adopted in our society. South Park was released almost 10 years after The Simpsons and is not a case of popular culture repeating itself, but popular culture drawing from previous generations and chapters in its history. Both are important in their own generation in very similar ways. South Park is an important ritual of rebellion for our generation because of how dark and vulgar it is. There is nowhere it won't go, no corner of society is safe from the critical eyes of the South Park writers. In comparison to The Simpsons, South Park is a step or maybe even two steps in the direction of the extreme, but is able to reach further because of it. In our developing generations, the things that we are able to see and hear on a daily basis are becoming increasingly uncensored. Television shows and movies are becoming more violent and vulgar as well as being more widely available than in past generations. The internet has reached everyone including very young children with the development of computers and smartphones. And from a young age, we are now exposed to these sorts of uncensored material that Generation X would have been shielded from. Because of this, in the most recent generation, violent and sexual content is more prevalent in the lives of everyone, including children, at a level never seen before. As a result of this, our generation has become increasingly desensitized to what would have used to be considered extremely shocking material. What led from The Simpsons to South Park's level of crude seems to be a sort of slippery slope scenario. Whereas, because we are becoming more used to this uncensored material, popular culture, or more specifically rituals of rebellion, which rely on shock and saying what is normally left unsaid, is forced to go further than ever before to reach that level of shock necessary to classify itself as rebellion rather than normal behavior. Understandably, the level of crude that the show achieves is unbecoming for some audiences, especially in older generations. Because they're not used to this level of extreme content, they see it as nothing other than shock value and have a harder time picking out the underlying themes. Despite this, it still remains one of the highest rated and longest running shows on Comedy Central. Though through all the dark humor and offensive plot lines with the right kind of eyes, you can see the themes emerging from the show and the importance of this sort of pressure release that rituals of rebellion can provide a society.